Peace and blessings, everyone. Welcome back to the Humble Servant Homestead. Today, I am out here where we have our kukuzi squash, or also they call it kukutsa squash, guys, okay? So, if you all remember, I brought you all in, <clears throat> and I planted the seeds that I received from a subscriber, okay? And so I came on in and I planted, I want to say, four seeds, guys. And if you all can see, it took over my fence line going this way and also took it over going that way. We'll show you that um, shortly. <clears throat> so right now, uh, this plant is not in the best of shape. Um, as you all can see, it did got hit a little bit with some um, fungus, also blight and also those squash bugs, guys, okay? They did got hit with them. Um, kind of let this plant look a little bit ugly right now, but on the ends where these plants are still running, the, plant, the leaves look real nice and healthy. And even we are still getting blossoms from these new shoots right here, guys. But that is something that is going to happen with the older leaves anyway they will get a bit diseased and withered away and die back. <clears throat> but from what I am seeing with these plants right here, they are prolific. Now, in order for you to have them to be prolific for you, one of the things, one of the things that you're going to have to do that I found that I had to do, and that is come on out here at night and pollinate these plants right here guys now the simple reason for that is during the day you have a whole bunch of different insect that is flying around whether that may be bees bumblebees um, butterflies and different stuff that can pollinate these flowers right here but because these flowers bloom at night it is very limited insect that would come on out and pollinate these fruit for you. Now, this is what that fruit will look like, okay? So this right here, and it's just like either even a watermelon, a pumpkin, or a cucumber where that you will have your fruit bud, and then, you know, of course, uh, your bud right here. So you'll see the fruit on the back, then your bud up top. Now, what will happen once this get to the point or to the stage where it's ready to open up its flower, you will have to come on out here, guys, and find a male flower to pollinate the female flower so that way it can hold for you. Um, what I've noticed, the nights that I, I skip and I didn't come on out here and pollinate those plants, what happened? I end up losing that fruit. It will turn yellow and simply just fall right off guys okay so that is one of the things with growing the kukutsa squash is you may need to help a little bit with pollination now it's not always necessary but in order for you to be able to get a good yield out of them it is good for you to come on in and just give this little lady right here a help with pollination so you can have uh some real nice fruits just like this one right here guys okay blow the trumpet in zion zion <laughs> sound the alarm Woo! all right guys so look at that right there i tell you whenever i do stuff like that i could feel <laughs> all praises be to the most side but that right there is the fruit of the kukutsa squash okay now this plant or this fruit right here. I show you this little fellow right here, guys. Um, I'll say in no time, it will get real long and start to swell up for you. I'll say probably in about, about a week or so, two weeks, that plant will, you know, get real nice and long, and then it start to swell up. But that is right at around that time when you want to go ahead and harvest those plants. And I'll show you in just a moment. Like this one right here, it's a bit hard because it have been sitting on this plant for quite a while. 
but um you still can eat this plant right here guys now what you would have to do once you get it inside of the kitchen you will need to go ahead and get either a potato peeler or a knife and peel this hard layer off and then it will expose to that real nice soft shell on the inside but if you don't want to do that and you simply want to just leave these right here on your plant for more seeds for seeds seed preservation to save seeds for next year you can let these go ahead and grow and you know of course dry out where they may be on the plant or you harvest it like this take it inside sit it down in a real nice cool area and let it go ahead and dry out that way okay so what i'm going to do come on in we're going to show you what these plants will look like um, at a young stage and that is preferably the time when you want to go ahead and harvest them so you have some real nice tender kukutsa all right come on along and one thing before we get on down there to the bottom guys i just want to go ahead and kind of show you all the production of this plant right here now if you notice look at that do you see that kukutsa now one of the thing is these oh is it just a kukutsa that you see or you also see my little friend that just won't leave my side now that is a good thing guys she tried to follow me just about everywhere that i go i wasn't expecting her to, to see her on the other side though but um this kakutsa right here as y'all can see that thing got so long to where it almost touched the ground guys okay so that is one of the thing uh once you plant them and let them hang these plants they will get longer and longer as time goes on now look at that that is another beautiful kukutsa right there and right here back on the other side of the fence we have two more uh pretty decent sized kukutsa now remember you can harvest them like that or you can simply leave them on the plant for seed here is another one that is a little bit shorter but like i always say guys uh for me uh, it doesn't really matter about how big the plant is as long as it grows something and you're able to harvest and eat something and feed your family that is all that matters all right so as we now look at that who would ever seen a cat and a dog are best friends look at that and just to speak of the the cat right there guys i had to get reinforcements here on the homestead but we'll talk about that on another day all right but look at that one i believe this one is even longer than this one here and it is look at that real nice long kukutsa squash um we have about uh three more on the other side we have another one that is pretty long right here as well as y'all can see so you know these these plants is really good you think about the size on these plants mm -hmm. they're able to feed a lot of people mm -hmm. okay so several meals in one several meals in one and that's that's what i kind of like because if you're in a situation where you need food um you know you have different variety of things that you can go for uh, because these squash right here even though this is an older squash i believe you should still be able to put this up because it is a gourd be able to put it up and use it maybe a couple months down the line um i will try that put it up and see if i can store it and then come back to it because it's always good when you can put something up to eat at a later date guys all right so here we have another one um just curving away down there at the bottom and we have another one right in here so i just want to kind of show you all the production of this plant mm -hmm. and remember i didn't even come on in well i did yes and remember i had to come on in and help to pollinate some of these blossoms right here okay and so here we have one that um we're going to pull this off let's see without damaging the vine ah, so this is one that as y'all can see uh something got a hold of it 
And that could be from a lot of that rain that we have been getting here. We have been getting a lot of rain here on the homestead, guys. And from what I'm seeing, that could cause that right there to just mildew away like that. All right. But um, here is that one that I was telling you guys about. And I think I'm going to harvest this one now because um, my wife wants to do something in the kitchen. And look at that. We have a little blemish right here. Don't know what that is from. But this is right about that size that you want to harvest that kukutsa, guys. Um, and, eat and eat fresh. Because even if you can, um, well, of course you can't feel it. You're on the other side. But just from feeling it right here, it is real nice and tender. Okay? And that's from feeling it. Um, so you get this inside of the kitchen. You could still peel that skin back or you can because it's still in its tender stage you can leave the skin on there and cook it with the skin guys okay because you pick it right at that time when it is best to cook in the kitchen all right and so even right down here as y'all can see we have a couple more small ones that is getting ready to start fruit now this down here in the end is um yeah right it's there. yes it's a couple more right here mm -hmm. yep another one there and we also have another one up top now this is coming from all that new growth guys that this plant has put out okay here we have another blossom that is going to get ready to start uh, putting on pretty soon so that's the thing even though you see your plant is withering away down there that don't mean that you got to unit it up and take it out of the garden, okay? Uh, leave it so that way these new shoots can go ahead and produce more fruit for you, okay? So, um, what can I say about the kukutsa? Um, I would say I would grow it again. Um, it's a plant that, um, you know, it brings food, okay? Let me ask you a question. Yes. <clears throat> yes, you would grow it again. Would you grow it again on the fence line? Or would you do a different kind of trellis situation and um, how long the fruit grows? You know what? I think the kukutsa will need space to run. It will need space. I mean, even if you were to build maybe see a trellis for it, I think that would work as well. But if I don't have a trellis come next, next growing season, mm -hmm. absolutely it will go on the fence line again. Um, and the reason why I guess she would ask that question, because if you notice right here, uh, this is where we had our yard long beans, guys, and it came through and it's starting to take over where we had the yard long beans planted. Now, the subscriber did say that, that this plant went about 15 feet up in a tree. OK, and and if you're watching, we just want to say thank you for sending us the Kukutsa squash seeds and it ran. And I want to say right now, it's way longer than 15 feet yeah. where it is right now, guys. And so continue. and still going because this is this is where it is right now. OK. And what we also do, I told you all that we'll take you over there on the other side and show you what it's doing on the other side of the fence as well, guys. So come on along and let's go. OK. And so this is where we are. This is where we are. Um, where this plant is still running guys and if you all can see right here it is still going but one of the things uh, that I've noticed I came out here today and I see a new fruit that is on here now this one I did not pollinate last night so what I'm going to go ahead and do I see a male flower right here guys now, usually you want to come out during the nighttime. These are closing up because the day is we have sunshine. So um, what I'm going to do with this right here, I'm pretty much going to peel these petals back right here, guys, just like that. And what that is going to do is going to expose uh, the pollen on the inside of this plant right here. Then I'm going to come on over here just like this to the female part of the plant. 
All right, and inside of here, there is also, um, that's where you would go ahead and, whoops, I'm being a little clumsy here. And so we're just going to rub, come on now. <laughs> and so we're just going to rub that pollen all on that right there. So you just let them go ahead and, you know, that's it. So I'm going to just go ahead and do another one because I didn't see a whole lot of pollen on that one. So we'll peel another petal back. Okay, we get on up here and we'll just go ahead and pray that that will take right there and Voila, that is it right there, guys. So, the kukuza squash. Of course, if you remember, I was calling the kukuzi squash, but um, for the people who this that are well known for this squash right here, they call it the kukuza squash, yes, which is the Italian guy. So, um, nonetheless, um, like I said, I will grow it again. I may even make a trellis, one of those, you know, I remember back home in Jamaica, my grandmother had one where she used to uh, grow the chocho. I don't know if y'all know the chocho. I think they have another name for it, um, but it's a, um, a arbor. We call it the chocho arbor, where that um, the chocho would grow and will hang down. And you're just able to walk up underneath there and harvest it, guys. So if the most I give me the strength, um, for next year, if you spare my life, I may try and build something like that. Well, not try. I may go ahead and build something like that so that way these kukutsa can just hang straight down. Okay, guys. So nonetheless, um, that is it right there. I just wanted to come on in and share the kukutsa with you all because I did make you all that promise. So that is one promise <laughs> that I made out of the way. Okay. But nonetheless, I just want to say thanks to each and every one of you all out there for stopping by the Humble Servant Homestead. And as always, peace and blessings to each and every one of you all out there. Remember, keep a smile on your face. You be happy, you be blessed, and you be cheerful, guys. And also remember, get on outside and get in the dirt and plant yourself some food okay the more people that are out there planting it's the less you have to worry about um depending on the government to bring food for you so get on out there guys and grow your own food all right have a blessed day and i'll see you again in another video have a blessed day